The level and uh, uh, amount of time that people are spending watching their video online uh, is pretty breathtaking. But all of that uh, highlights the anomaly between uh, the fact that this is a whole new world and it is a world that consumers have completely embraced, uh, but there's not that much money in it, uh, relatively speaking, at least relative to the level of engagement by consumers, is the reason that there's this disconnect that we've got a marketing problem or is there a product problem? Uh, so I, I'd, I'd like to turn that basic question over to you all and uh, see if we can have a conversation around it. I don't think that there's a um, product problem. Um, I think there is definitely measurement complication. Like it's hard because the internet is so fragmented. Um, you know, whereas I think it's easier to measure television. Um, there's just so many outlets on the internet. When you get down to, you literally have to measure at the clip level, at the individual viewer level, and you have all of the different embedded players. You know, it's, it's not like measuring a fire hose, right? It's like measuring a sprinkler system, like all over the world. And, and that's very difficult. And I think that hurts people in terms of getting their heads around it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that that's one of the main issues more than there's a product problem. And it's just a, we haven't yet come up with, um, like John, we were talking about this a bit about this backstage, is for all of the evils of the 30 second spot, it's standardized. Like people can build a marketplace around it. There's high liquidity, people get it. Um, we are very far with products like this as they are very customized. And I think that's one of the main challenges. So I would say measurement and then not so much the consumer product, but what the ad product is around that consumer product. I mean, I, I can I, <laughs> I can't help it. Um, I don't think there's a problem. Um, uh, you know, right now, if you think about the amount of television that's viewed, is about 155 hours a month by consumers. The average number of uh, uh, hours viewed by video, five. So if, you don't, if you're not a Columbia math grad student, that's about sort of 3%. Um, currently, Group M was spending about 5% of their TV budgets on video. Um, so, so I think it's, it's sort of, so you not think statistically, Mary Meeker's got it all wrong? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's, you know, it's, not, it's not statistically you know, ro robust, um, but I think there's a huge opportunity. Um, and so, so you know, I, I don't think that we're underspending necessarily, but there's a massive opportunity in terms of the engagement of television. I, what, I, what I failed to mention, of course, is young males 18 to 24 are watching 100, 100, uh, only 110 hours of video and, and, um, and t sorry, 110 hours of television and, and 10 hours of video. So that's a much higher percentage, and, and that's the way it's trending, and I think that's a huge opportunity that we've got. And I think Larry said it, um, uh, I think that the biggest barrier that we've got is measurement. You know, television was really simple. It was around a 30-second spot. It was the demand and supply was predictable. The demand was what the client's budgets are. <clears throat> the supply was the spectrum that was available to us, and that was it. You know, this is our way fragmented it's, and, and our kind of terminology is as complicated as the product itself. And the way we measure it is an issue because I think our marketers need consistency. They need to know what happens if, when I take a million dollars from television and move it into video, what happens then? Not anecdotally, yes, I'm gonna get more young males and stuff. Exactly what happens to my reach curve? What, you know, uh, uh, where do I get a higher frequency or a lower frequency? Um, and what happens to my predisposition to purchase, my brand lift, all of those sorts of things, which we're working on very, very hard with Nielsen right now. But I think th these are all opportunities, by the way. I don't really want to stress them. I, I think that video is flying, and it's going to continue flying, and it'll double in size again in the next couple of years. But I don't really think there's a problem. Now, Mike, you uh, described as one possible model sort of breaking even on the online video as a way to have uh, in much the same way that uh, you know, Marvel breaks even on comic books to create some characters that ultimately will go into a media where you can make money. But you were making money before just online, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and adding video into the mix, do you actually sell it as all one big package or do, is it just a question of does this media line work and what's the model? Right, at this point we sell 
uh, generally big marketing ideas, and then we bundle in the appropriate media, the appropriate integrations that we can into YouTube, into you know online, into into mobile. Uh, and with our biggest advertisers, we we sell really multi-screen across platform. Uh, and one of the things to uh, 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 to your point earlier is is we invested very heavily in measurement very early on, uh, and that has yielded a tremendous uh, ability to scale uh, programs and earn our advertisers' trust. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of explain, explain that a little bit. Um, in, in the pharma category, which is probably half of our ad revenue, we'll create a marketing solution, and then, and then every day we, we, we send out 10 million email newsletters uh, across, across all of our different properties, People click on those ads, they go to microsites that have video, they go to YouTube that has video. And let's say we, we send 100,000 people to some marketing concept. You can actually figure out, uh, you can match those email addresses to people's names uh, offline via companies like Axiom. You can then on a blind basis take that data and try to match it up with prescription sales lift. Uh, so prescription benefit managers are the entities that manage the prescription benefit for corporations. And basically through a few vendor relationships on a blind basis, we can look at, if we drive 100,000 people, we can find about 25% of their actual post ad, uh, marketing experience uh, purchase behavior or prescription behavior. Uh, and you know, we've literally scaled campaigns from you know, a $20,000 a month test to um, you know, a six million dollar uh, six month uh, uh, deal. Um, we have very, very large um, uh, individual brand spenders with us when we buy into measurement upfront together. Uh, so I would say that 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 uh, where I think we've been leaders in our actions, I'd say I'd say thought leaders, but uh, I don't think I don't think people uh, pay enough attention to uh, the investments we've made on this front, but. Really, um, and, and I'll give you guys a, an alarming uh, or interesting uh, uh, take on this. Uh, a few, there's a market research company called Dunhumby, um, started in the UK by uh, London School of Economics professor, joint venture with Tesco, which is 50% share in the UK. They took their customer loyalty data and in a very granular way could measure marketing. They replicated that model with uh, uh, with, with a joint venture with Kroger's in the US, and they've now expanded to Macy's and, and, um, uh, and Home Depot and a few others. Uh, and, and basically, we, we called Dunhumby and we said, you know, we want to have you guys come in and we want to measure three of our, of our campaigns uh, around healthy food and things that are purchased in the grocery store. And it literally took us three months to get through be, uh, the, the process of getting them to say yes. So we were trying to spend money with them to measure our campaigns, but we were the, it was the first time that a publisher had ever called them and, and asked to measure an ad campaign on behalf of their advertisers. So when I hear from my uh, colleagues, you know, I'm on the IAB board and we, we've created, you know, a billion great metrics, click-through rate, view through this, that, we're inventing new metrics you know, daily, weekly. We're trying to consolidate into GRP now, which is a good thing that the IAB is doing, but really, end of the day, marketer cares about how many pallets am I shipping from the warehouse. It doesn't matter what the medium is. Uh, and uh, as an online industry, we have not been disciplined enough in respecting that metric. We haven't done the lifting uh, that's required to, to, to show it. Uh, and, and when it is done, it's heavily rewarded. I just want to uh, pick up on that and, and say that to, to that exact point, uh, there, there's two, two points on this whole subject of why the money isn't there yet. Number one, I do believe it is a marketing slash sales problem. Um, not to say we've all got the goods, but uh, when you look at what the broadcast networks and to some extent the cable networks do every year, particularly the broadcasters, no, you know, I think Google and YouTube would acknowledge that one of the, one of the this grand experiment, which we commend and we've been a big beneficiary of, the one area which is still not proven is that they can sell in the same brilliant way they do search, display, and all those uh, wonderful revenue generators to sell television. And, and I think to this date, and, and, and the good news is they're big, uh, 
and, but they're not evil, and they've acknowledged uh, recently that some of the sales rights, which they withheld in exchange for all these advances, they actually could use some help. So selling television the way CBS does for a shrinking audience, continuing to see prices go up, is a breathtaking accomplishment. And uh, we are out now, including some of the sizzle you saw, selling this as television. Uh, the woman who leads our, our revenue activity is, uh, like me, a recovering traditional media executive. We're not trying to grow the digital pale. We are trying to swing over a rather significant percentage from what we call the TV bucket. And it's working. And, it's, and it's, uh, it is a lot about packaging, a lot about selling, and getting a, a bit away from the uh, what I think is still a big ROS model. Four billion hours of viewing on YouTube last month, but a lot of it, and, and just a couple of examples of, of, of the growth that still needs to occur. Uh, you know, a Romney ad ran on Jay-Z's Life and Times, which didn't, uh, our partner didn't appreciate. And we kept saying, well, how could that happen? What well, happens when I think the, the, you know, you're at an early stage? Ditto, uh, you know, erectile dysfunction ads on a, on a channel like my ish, which is targeted to 13-year-old girls. Um, <laughs> We, we, we have a targeting issue and a packaging issue. And, and, and just switching to the second point, which is we don't today look at, and, and I think for the foreseeable future, look at YouTube as a platform. And, and we do not look at our channels, even with all due respect to Jay and Skrillex and Meredith, you saw on the tape, this is not must-see TV. And the way we are getting this to the audience is, uh, and, and there's a number of collaborations in which we do this, is to push the content out not expect people to come to us, but a, a gigantic percentage of our viewing is happening. We say YouTube's a player more than it's a platform. And the brilliance of it is that that player lives on all these other platforms and that a substantial percentage of our viewing, I mean, the, the electronic dance channel higher than any of them, is taking place, quote, off YouTube. It's on Skrillex's blog, pushed out through uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Ditto, uh, Jay, and the others. And by the way, we still get the views. We can still monetize the views. It's still on that, that wonderful YouTube player. And they can subscribe. They get noticed, uh, notified when things go out. It's just a different kind of channel viewing than what we all sort of grew up on. And, and the ego goes out the window. If that's the way to do it, fish where the fish are, that's, that's the way we're going to do it. Uh, for John and for Kerry, with the, with the degree and the um, Old Spice work, clearly off the charts in terms of exposure and views. Any kind of metrics you can share with us that tie back to even, and clearly the objective being awareness building and buzz creating, any objectives tied back to per, uh, intent to purchase or any, any of those kinds of business metrics? I, I'm happy to go first. I, I can't share the details, but, but it's, it's, still, it's still going on. Um, uh, during this promotional campaign, and I have to stress that this wasn't the only promotional area, so sometimes it's very difficult because um, good campaigns uh, happen across channels and across brand, across, uh, across media, but there's been a, a, a significant sales lift and a significant awareness lift, and there were, there were various metrics on a, on, on a behavioral scale that we wanted to change as well in terms of uh, who this appealed to in terms of making it younger and and, and, those, and those are hitting the right marks. So, uh, you know, our, our, our clients measure these things obsessively, um, and I think we're getting better and better at measuring them, but it's very difficult to unpick the exact influence of this video. There are, I think there are three or four videos in that series. Uh, I think the, the one, the rock climbing one is the one that's featured best, as you probably saw the, the one that we showed first. Um, but, uh, but the Masters of Movement is a, is a very interesting thing for them. They didn't really want to talk about a deodorant as much, but they wanted to own that kind of positioning, and that's, and that's working very well for them. Yeah, I think it's a similar story around Old Spice, where, um, as John was saying, this is the Muscle Music video is kind of one of a series. They've actually been working with Terry Crews for, um, I think, over a year at this point, um, where they've been very, very successful. So they're sort of deep into the, we know that this approach to communicating with that same target audience, young men, has worked really well for them. So they sort of had the step function effect. You know, when Terry did the original ads about a year ago, if anyone remembers, like, I'm on a horse or any mm. of those other viral videos, they were like, what the hell is this? Um, and they sort of now are, are continuing to invest in it. So I think for them, you know, muscle music certainly hits 
John's saying all the marks at this point are, you know, is it generating a certain number of views? Is this sort of continuing to pour equity for them into the approach that they've taken with Terry? So I, we don't have any data from them that says this video specifically, you moved it this much. What we do know, what we're most excited about is that was a series that's working really well for them. You know, they were pretty, you know, happy with the results that they were getting on other platforms. Um, the big breakthrough on this one was um, we were able to bring it a whole different level of interactivity that um, is actually technically really challenging um, so that they could produce that um, same level of response not using you know, YouTube was, was kind of the big data point for them. And what, I, what I would add, I think we talked a little earlier about the importance of measurement. Um, our challenge would be to say, so those 40 or 50 million views that we're getting there, what, what would be the equivalent GRP? How do we combine that with television and with other media, and how so so and and what is the cross-platform way of measuring that in a fairly simplified, standardized, and consistent way? I think those are the kinds of things that will release a lot more video spend, uh, sorry, television spend into video.